All right. Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Forgive me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh, being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to the hopeful elect, which are your so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, the true biblical Israelites. All right, like I always show at the beginning of these videos, highway and byway lessons. All right, if you see yourself on this 12 tribes chart, all right, you make up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, right? You know, not the people over in the land of Israel right now claiming to be the children of the Lord, all right? You know, we went over this many a times in the past, all right? Those are imposters, all right? You know, they don't fit the prophecy that uh, pertains to who the true biblical Israelites are in today's society, all right? You know, and just for edification purposes, you know, I'm gonna touch on that, you know, once again, all right? Because the whole point of us, you know, bringing out these lessons and whatnot, you know, going over these scriptures is to ultimately seal the elect. And some of the elect still don't know who they are, all right? Some of the elect still believes that those people over the land of Israel right now are the children of the Lord, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of scriptures showing you that, you know, um, they are not the children of Yahweh by Shem right? You know, so first I wanna get, um, you know, the scriptures where it talk about how, you know, uh, our land, matter of fact, Salaki, give me a second. Yeah, this is Luke chapter 21, where it talks about how our land, you know, would be trodden down by the Gentiles, all right? You know, the Gentiles being these other nations, all right? You know, and who's there in the land of Israel right now, all right? Who has taken over our land, all right? Right now, you see so-called black, so-called uh, 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 white people there, right? Esau, Edom, the Edomites. That's who's in the land of Israel right now. So, this is Luke chapter 21. And we're going to start at verse 20. All right. All right. We're going to start at verse 20. And it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. All right. You know, and uh, this is going back to 70 AD. All right. When Jerusalem was pretty much, uh, pretty much taken over by the Romans. All right. You know, we was pretty much persecuted by the Romans. You know, Israel pretty much fled into uh, different pl different places, West Africa, to flee from Roman persecution, all right? You know, uh, I believe I stated this in uh, other videos. If you want to read more into that history, you know, a good book to read is uh, Babylon and Timbuktu and whatnot, all right? You know, it goes into that. Ultimately showing you that the Bible is not just a, you know, a, a, a book of fairy tales, but it's a book of history as well, because these things that a actually happen in history, all right? Jerusalem, Israel was uh, pretty much persecuted by the Romans, all right? Israelites fled from uh, Jerusalem, you know, into different places of the earth and whatnot, all right? You know, chiefly West Africa, all right? And that's pretty much how, you know, we was captured off the shores of West Africa and brought over here to the Americas and whatnot, all right? You know, because we fled to West Africa from Jerusalem, all right? You know, it's a whole history behind that. You know, you can read into it. But let's continue. Verse 21 says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too all right like i said you know we fled from our homeland to flee from roman persecution all right you know we fled and went into different places you know verse 22 it says for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled all right you know and this is ultimately you know what we're reading about you know going into the falling away all right that was the falling away when we was pretty much you know, uh, you know, we had to flee from our homeland and whatnot. You know, we was persecuted by the Romans, so on and so forth. That's what the falling away is going into. Let's continue. Verse 23 says, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that, are, that give suck in those days, for there should be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. All right? Because back then, during the time of the Roman persecution, you know, people that had children, you know, it was a lot harder for them. Because not only did they have to look out for themselves, it's a lot.
All right, not only did they have to look out for themselves, but they had to look out for their children as well. All right, you know, it, it got so bad to back back then, you know, uh, a lot of our people were starving, you know, and they a lot of our people began to eat their children. All right, cannibalism. You know, that's what happened back then during the time of 70 AD, you know, when uh, we was getting persecuted and whatnot by the Romans, all right? You know, you had a lot of our people eating their own children. So going back to the scripture, it says, but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there should be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, all right? Those are the type of things that our people was going through during that time, all right? And this scripture can also apply, you know, to the times that we're coming into, known as Jacob's Trouble, the worst time in history is going to surpass the Roman persecution. It's going to surpass the transatlantic slave trade. You know, it's going to surpass, you know, when Christopher Columbus came over to the Americas to persecute, you know, uh, or to do what he did to the Northern Kingdom, so-called natives, all right? You know, the, uh, the Latin tribes, the Northern Kingdom, all right? So-called Hispanics and natives and all that, all right? It's going to surpass that. Any, th any type of uh, catastrophic event that you can think about in history, times that we're coming into right now is going to surpass that all right but let's continue verse 24 it says that they shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the time of the gentiles be fulfilled all right and there you have it jerusalem shall be trodden down of the of the gentiles until the time of the gentiles be fulfilled all right you know so right now that tells you that the people that's in the land of Israel right now are in fact and indeed they're Gentiles they're not the children of the Lord all right you know and we're coming into a time where the times of the Gentiles is going to be fulfilled all right you know the scriptures talk about how Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed all right you know we are in those times right now all right you know Esau is the only, it's the last people uh, that's going to be ruling before you know, uh, the nation of Israel is placed back in power, all right? So the time of the Gentiles is almost fulfilled, all right? But the whole point of me bringing this out is to ultimately show you that, you know, hey, these are not the children of the Lord, all right? These are Gentiles over in the land of Israel claiming to be us, all right? Let's get Ezekiel chapter 36. You know, and I'm just bringing out a few scriptures to show you newer brothers and you newer sisters out there that these people are imposters, all right? You know, it's a lot of our people still that believe, still believe in the narrative that, you know these people are the chosen all right they're not all right they're gutter rat bastards all right you know let's continue uh let's get ezekiel chapter 36 and this is uh kind of going into a prophecy that prophecy that's gonna soon happen because right now what do you see you see uh russia you know where they're pretty much coming up against that land over there the scriptures talk about how Gog and Magog is ultimately going to end up rising up against that land and destroying it. All right. So you're seeing the build up to that right now. All right. But let's continue. This is Ezekiel chapter 36. And let's start at verse uh, 1. All right. And it says, It says, Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 2 Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because the enemy has said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. All right. So the enemy being these other nations. All right. Because if you want to know who the enemies of Israel are, just read Psalms chapter 83. All right. You know, it tells you who the enemies of the Lord is. All right. Who the enemies of Israel is. All right. These other nations. And the first nation that's named is the uh, Tabernacles of Edom. All right. Which is a so-called white man in today's society. All right. Let's continue, verse 2. And it says, Thus saith the Lord. Yeah, let's read verse 2 again. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, because the enemy has said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. All right? So the enemy, you know, has taken our ancient high places and made it their possession. All right? Let's continue. Verse 3. And it says, Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, because they have made you desolate and swallow you up on every side that ye may be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, all right? Those are heathens in that land right now. And who do you see in that land right now? These down small hats, 1948ers, all right? Amalek, which is Amalek, which is pretty much a, you know, a branch of Esau Edom, all right? You know, also you see the you know, uh, Ishmael, all right? So-called Arabs, 
All right, those are chiefly the main peoples that's in the land of Israel right now, fighting over a land that's not even theirs, all right? You know? So that lets you know who's the, uh, those, the, those people over in the land of Israel right now, they're not the children of the Lord. They're deemed as heathens, all right? Let's continue. It says, uh, Salakia. Here it says, that you may be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Verse 4. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. Thus saith the, thus the Lord Yahweh to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys and to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which, are, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Again, saying the same thing. Our land has become a possession to the residue of the heathen. All right? You know, those are heathens right there that's taking up our land, that's polluting our land, all right? You know, over there having down alphabet parades and shit over on our land, all right? That's why the Lord said he's, he's going to have to cleanse that land, all right? Because that land has been, it's been uh, polluted, all right? That's the holy land, but yet these damn devils have came over in that land and polluted it, all right? You know, having, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, alphabet parades and all that, you know? so on and so forth and lord you already know the rest of the stuff they do all right you know giving uh babies circumcisions with their mouths and stuff all right you know just being uh completely abominable you know doing all types of wickedness over there all right these are the things that these down small hats do all right let's continue verse four it says therefore no verse five it says therefore thus saith the lord surely in the fire of my jealousy have i spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all idomia all right idomia is another name for esau edom all right that lets you know who's the people who are who, who those people are over in that land right now all right they're not the children of the lord they're idomians all right edomites esau edom the so-called white man all right you know that's who over that's who's in that land right now taking up taking over our land all right and very soon they're about to be cleansed out of that land for soon ezekiel chapter 38 all right, Gog and Magog is going to rise up against that land and destroy it. All right, this pl their place is going to be, you know, cleansed just like America, Babylon the Great is going to be cleansed. All right, you know, but let's continue. It says, uh, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Verse 6 prophesied therefore concerning the land of Israel, saying to the mountains and to the hills to the rivers and to the valleys thus saith the lord yahweh behold i have spoken in my je jealousy and in my fury because he has borne the shame of the heathen verse 7 therefore thus saith the lord yahweh i have lifted up my hand truly the heathen that are about you they shall bear their shame all right these heathens they're going to bear their shame all right you know they're going to be taken out of that land that land is going to be cleansed all right in the upper echelon of these damn heathens all right you know, these small hats, all right? Guess where they're going to go? They're going into chains, all right? Because guess what? They're the ones that's behind, you know, our captivity, all right? They're the ones that funded, you know, the slave ships, all right? So guess what? Like the book like the book of Revelation chapter 13 says, he that leads to captivity is going to go into captivity, all right? You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, all right? You know, they can't get the easy way out. These devils got to serve hardcore bondage the same way that we had to all right and that's according to the scriptures not according to our emotions all right not according to how i feel but thus saith the scriptures all right let's read it this is revelation chapter 13 verse 10 it says he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here's the patience and the faith of the saints all right this is what has to happen all right this is what the saints are waiting for all right, and who are the saints according to the scriptures? All right, the Israelites. Let's go ahead and get that. All right, this is Psalms chapter 148 and verse um, verse 14. All right, and it says, He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, all right? A people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So that lets you know who the saints are, all right? The saints are the Israelites, all right? 
the saints are not all nations of people that just simply worship the Lord and whatnot, right? The saints are the Israelites according to the Bible. So when you go back to Revelation chapter 13 and 10, it says this is the patience of the saints, right? The Israelites, all right, starting with the elect, is waiting on the day that these devils go in chains, all right? This is what we're looking for, all right? This is part of the gospel, the good news, all right? So this is why we come out here and preach that and teach you that, all right? Because this is something that you should be looking forward to, the day that these devils are placed in chains and the day that you're back on top. Why? Right, because this is what this is the times that we're coming into. Uh, a power shift is getting ready to come. All right, you know. Let me uh, get the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight. All right, and these, like I said, I'm just bringing out a few scriptures to show you that these, the, the these prophecies, they don't fit these people over in that land right now. Right, because the scripture says that you know the true Israelites, you know they will be serving their enemies. All right, they will go into captivity by the way of ships. All right, you know, we'll be at the bottom of society, right? Fatherless households, single parents households, and all that. But when you look at these damn devils, none of these scriptures fit, though. Fit them, all right? Let's get it. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, uh, it's a lucky, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's start at verse 15, all right? And this is a list, like I, I've mentioned before, verse 15 on down to verse 68 is a list of curses that will be put on the children of Israel in the last days, all right? That will be on the children of Israel in the last days as a sign and a wonder to who we are, all right? So this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass in the last days, so like it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, and these curses are on us until this day right now. All right, but the curses they're getting ready to be uplifted off of, off of us. All right, you know, it's, there's going to be a power shift. The scriptures say the Lord, you know, He's going to curse those that cursed us. All right, the curse is going to be put on these other nations. All right, you know, and the curse is going to be taken off of us, and we're going to be placed on high, like where we're supposed to be. All right. But due to our disobedience to the Lord, we're under these curses right now, all right? We're at the bottom of society. We have to deal with single parent households, fatherless households, all right? Having to go to these damn devils to uh, for our resources and all that, all right? Not being sovereign, you know? This is what we got to deal with, you know, because of our disobedience. But, hey, a power shift is getting ready to change very shortly, all right? Because we see all these end time prophecies popping off. We see that this devil's kingdom is on his last leg, all right? America, Babylon the Great is getting ready to fall, all right? You know, this dollar, you know, is no longer really backed by oil anymore. Saudi Arabia, they're not, you know, uh, renewing the petrodollar agreement, all right? So once this dollar's co uh, collapsed, you know, America is really no longer, you know, a world superpower, right? Because the dollar is really what was keeping America afloat and whatnot, you know? But that's come to an end, you know? The dollar is not backed by gold. You know, it's not backed by oil anymore, really. All right, Saudi Arabia is finding other ways to trade. All right, so what? It's just a piece of paper at this point, all right? You know, and it's really always been that. The dollar has always really been trash, you know, but how much more now, all right? That just shows you that the, the state of this economy, the state of Babylon the Great, it's, 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 it's over. It's not looking good, all right? You know, but let's continue. Let's jump down to uh, verse... 40, uh, 45. Yeah, this is verse 45, all right? This is showing you that these curses is therefore a sign to who we are, all right? This is uh, verse 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Matter of fact, yeah, until thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and statutes which he commanded thee. Verse 46, they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever, all right? And it's not meaning literally forever, all right? I believe the scriptures talk about how Sodom and Gomorrah will be up in flames forever, all right? Is it in flames forever right now? Is it still in flames? No, it's not. It's just a wasteland, all right? You know, so it's different contexts to the, to the term forever when it comes to the scripture. All right, when it says forever and ever, 
that means like literally forever and ever, right? Everlasting. But when it just says forever, it doesn't mean literally forever, right? You got to understand the context of that. Because the scripture says that the Lord will take the curses off of us and put it on our enemies, all right? You know, you know the scripture says that we will be rulers upon the earth. You know, Second Edges uh, six and nine says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So that right there alone lets you know the curses are not going to be on us forever, all right? But let's jump down to verse um, sixty four. And it says, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone all right you know and this is what happened you can find us in every single country upon the earth all right you even have israelites that look like these other nations all right you know but they're still israelites at the end of the day so you know we're everywhere you can find us in egypt saudi arabia africa you know uh, uh indonesia all right, Japan, China, all of that. All right, we're literally everywhere because the scripture said we'll be scattered into all nations, all right? And that's exactly what happened. Now let's jump down to um, verse uh, 68. All right, verse 68 is really the point that lets you know that these devils, the, these uh, small hats, 1948ers, claiming to be the children of the Lord, they're not the children of the Lord. So this is uh, verse 68, all right? And it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, and thou shalt see it no more again. And there thou shalt, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bind men and bind women, and no man shall buy you, all right? And if you want to know who our enemies are, like I said, go read uh, Psalms 83, all right? You know, I'm not going to get into all that, but if you want to read it, that's where you'll find out who the enemies of the, of the nation of Israel are, who the enemies of the Lord are, all right? So this scripture says we'll be sold onto our enemies as bond men and bond women, and we will go into Egypt again by ships, all right? And the word Egypt is synonymous with bondage and captivity, all right? Let me get that right quick. Salaki, give me a second. All right, this is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. It says, I am the Lord Yahweh. Salaki, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right? So that shows you that, you know, uh, the, 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 the word Egypt, you know, it, it pretty much means bondage. It's synonymous with slavery, bondage. So when you go back to um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's basically saying that we were going to slavery by the way of ships, all right? Mind you, these scriptures was written thousands and thousands of years ago, all right? So the scripture says we said we would go, the, the, the scripture said that real Israelites, right, were going to slavery by the way of ships thousands of years ago before it even happened, all right? And who do you know that went into slavery by the way of ships, all right? So-called blacks. Who you know today is so-called African Americans, right? And so-called natives and Hispanics as well, all right? They were they went into slavery by ships too, you know? You know, uh 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 yeah, you know, I was trying to remember his name. I had a brain fart for a minute, you know, but yeah, if I think of the name, yeah, that, that's what ha uh happened. All right. Let me see if I can find the person's name. Yeah, when the, pretty much when the conquistadors conquered you know uh you know the hispanics and all that you know a lot of them was taken back to different countries on ships as well all right you know that's what happened so uh um, yeah not only so-called blacks went into slavery by ships all right so-called hispanics and native americans went into slavery by ships as well proving them to be israelites also all right you know but the whole point of it a uh, whole point of me bringing this out is to show you that this curse don't fit them all right, they never been on uh, slave ships. All right, they never had to go into slavery by the way of ships. All right, and serve their enemies. All right, you know. So, like I said, you know, I was just bringing it out for edification purposes. All right, to show you that those people are ultimately not the children of Yahweh Shemiah Shire. Right, and there's many other scriptures 
prove of that. All right? You know, uh, Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. Synagogue of Satan. All right? You know? So, yeah, you know, yeah, you so called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you are the true children of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and it's time to repent before, you know, all hell break loose in this place known as Babylon the Great. Because that's what's getting ready to happen. If you ain't on the Lord's good side, you're ultimately going to perish. All right? You know? And Shalawan to you speckled birds and you Israelite foreigners that scatter out in other nations that look like the other nations but are in fact Israelites, all right? You know, so we are here in the highways and the byways, you know, once again, you know, the prophesied the downfall of, the, of this wicked kingdom known as Babylon the Great, aka America, also known as spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, spiritual Nineveh, Rome, Greece, all right? Many uh, kingdoms all in one, all right? You know, also, uh, I'm out here to uh, pretty much uh, preach the gospel, the gospel meaning the good news, all right? You know, and, and many uh, past lessons already went into what the gospel is, so I'm not going to go deep into that this time. But the gospel is pretty much in a nutshell that, you know, the Lord is about to place us back on high where we're supposed to be at, all right? And take us uh, from this low estate where we're at right now, all right? You know, and uh, the, the gospel also includes that the Lord is going to bring destruction to this uh, wicked kingdom known as Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, all right? Because in order for righteousness to be here on the earth, you know, uh, America ultimately has to be destroyed, all right? That had, that had, that's what has to happen, you know? That's what has to happen before our kingdom is established here on the earth, all right? You know? And a lot of people, they would say, like, how is that good news? It is good news because America has to go. America is the epitome of all wickedness, all right? That's why the scriptures in uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation, it talks about how all nations have drunken of the wine of uh, Babylon the Great, all right? All these nations have pretty much taken on the philosophies, the ways of America, Babylon the Great, all right? You know, America, like even last year, I've mentioned a few times, you know, America has tried to force the alphabet agenda on Africa, all right? You know, and uh, the president over there in Africa, I forget what country it was, you know, but uh, he, pretty, he pretty much refused it. He's like, he ain't getting down with that. So here it is, you know, Sleepy Joe, he tried to uh, put sanctions and whatnot, you know, on... Uh, that particular country right because they would not get down with the agenda and uh that america is trying to push with this alphabet uh this alphabet is all right i'll put it that way you know so that's just an example of how you know these other nations have drinking of the wine of uh, babylon the great all right that's an example of how america's pr the pretty much the epitome of all wickedness so once america is taken out and xed out hey the, the earth is going to be at risk all right, everything's going to be placed back in its natural order, all right? You know, so, uh, so lucky. So with that being said, you know, I want to start off with uh, Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14, all right? So lucky, let me see. I'm trying to make sure that this phone ain't overheating or whatnot because it's pretty hot out here today. You know, I might have to go in the shade in a minute so this phone won't overheat. But, uh, yeah, I want to start off with Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14, all right? Because like I stated earlier, there's going to be a power shift here on the earth, all right? You know, there's going to be a power shift, all right? Right now, you have our enemies ruling, all right? Esau, Edom, so-called white man, all right? You know, he's ruling the earth. And let's get a second address chapter 6, 6 and verse 9. Because this is how you know who's ruling the earth right now. All right? So this is 2nd Edges, chapter 6, and verse 9. And it says, uh, no, verse 7. Let's start at verse 7. All right? And this is Edges speaking. All right? It says, Then I answered I and said, What shall be the parting of sunder? Or when shall it be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follows? All right. So Andrews, he's pretty much asking, like, what's going to be the signs of the times? All right. You know, what's going to be the, you know, the uh, Salaki? It says, when shall it be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follows? All right. So Andrews, he's pretty much asking, like, you know, when's the the new rulership going to come? All right. You know, and when's going to be the end of this current time? Verse eight, and it says, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac. When Jacob and Esau were born, of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, right? So if you recall back in uh, Genesis chapter 25, you know, 
Esau coming out first, Jacob holding on to the heel of Esau, all right? That was symbolic of the rulership, of how things are supposed to be set up, right? The elder shall serve the younger, all right? You know, but again, going back to what I was reading in Deuteronomy chapter 28, all right, due to our disobedience, all right, the, it was kind of flipped, all right? Because the scripture said we would serve our enemies, all right? You know, so because of our disobedience, you know, the elder is not serving the younger right now. The younger is pretty much serving the elder. But that's been a change, all right? Because we're almost at the end of our captivity, all right? Let's continue, uh, verse uh, 9. And it says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows it, all right? So, J so Esau, he's going to be ruling at the end of the world, all right? And Jacob, he's the beginning of the rulership that's going to come on the earth afterwards, all right? After Esau is done ruling, all right? Let me get another scripture. Because the scripture, does, does the scripture talk about how, you know, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And eventually the Lord, he's going to set over one, set over the earth one that is profitable, roughly paraphrasing. Let me see if I can find that. All right, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 4. It says, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. All right. You know. So the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, all right? He controls who's in rulership, all right? So, yeah, Esau Edom is in, in, uh, in rulership right now, but the Lord, he, he has put that in place, all right, for a reason, all right? Because we had to serve out our punishment and whatnot, but soon that's getting ready to change, you know? The scriptures talk about how, you know, when a righteous in authority, everybody is rejoicing, all right? And when you look at the state of this world right now, everybody is in mourning, all right? You know, these other countries, like everybody, literally, right? Because things are not set up the way they're supposed to be set up, right? This damn devil, Esau eating a so-called white man, right? You know, he doesn't know how to rule the earth. That's why everything is messed up, out of order, polluted. The, uh, the, earth, the air that we breathe is polluted. The water, all right, the food, all right? You know, Esau, he's just pretty much did a whole number on the earth. So the Lord, he's getting ready to place a, you know, the, a, a, a real righteous authority on the earth all right let me see if i can find that all right so this is a uh, proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2 and it says when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked bear through the people mourn, all right? So when the wicked are in authority, the people are mourning, all right? Everything is literally in mourning, all right? Even when you look at the animals locked up in cages in the zoo, they're in mourning, all right? I remember last year I went to the zoo, you know, the animals, they look very depressed, all right? Why? Because the animals, they're literally supposed to be out here enjoying, you know, the earth, all right? And where they're supposed to be, all right? But they're locked up in cages and all that. So pretty much all the creation is in mourning, all right? You know, but very soon, things are going to be placed back in the way they're supposed to be, all right? You know, in a, in a, in a righteous rulership, all right? You know, there's not going to be any more pollution, no more, uh, you know, things that you see going on right now. Everything's going to be changed. That's why you, the scriptures talk about how it's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Let me see if I can get there right quick, all right? I'm kind of just going, rolling through the spirit right now. This is uh, Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse 1. And it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. All right? And this is not talking about it's literally going to be like a new uh, heavens and a new earth. It's going to be the same earth, all right? Just renewed, all right? That word uh, new in this particular scripture is kainos, all right? I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can find it right quick. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I just want to make sure that this is the word, but it's word new. It's a lot here. Let me just uh, type it in. All right, so this is... Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the word for the word new in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1. And it says kainos, all right? Let me see if I can play it for you. Strong's G 2537, kainos, kainos. All right. So that's the word, that's the uh, Greek word for the word new in that particular scripture, all right? And let's see what the definition of it is. It says new as respects form recently made fresh recent unused unworn as respects substance of a new kind unprecedented novel uncommon unheard of all right so the world that we're getting ready to experience all right you know lord will will be the elect of course you know the new world is going to be like a world that you never experienced before like you can't even fathom how things are going to be it's going to be a new and refreshed earth all right everything is going to be beautified all right set back in order all right the scriptures say you know what uh, this is a scripture that just came to mind the lord he says he's going to beautify the plate his uh the place of his feet and what what what, what does scripture say about that the, the earth is the lord's footstool all right so let me just get that right quick i don't want to get ahead of myself but yeah everything is going to be set back in order once you know this power shift comes all right let me see if i can find that all right so yeah so this is isaiah chapter 60 and we're gonna start at verse um This, this whole chapter is really good Like you just kind of get a vision Of how the kingdom is going to be Alright Let me see if I I'll start it on yeah, Let's start at verse 10 alright But like I said This whole chapter is like it's, really, it's a really good chapter Because it gives you a vision how things are going to be established on the earth all right so this is isaiah chapter 60 and verse 10 it says and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their kings shall minister unto thee for in my wrath i smote thee but in my favor i have i had mercy on thee all right so the lord he has had wrath on us because of our disobedience but the lord he's also merciful as well and the lord he's going to take up the curses take the curses off of us and the curse is going to be put on them all right we had to uh, slave and build up america babylon the great all right you know if it wasn't for us you know america wouldn't be here all right we had to build up this place all right america was built off of blood sweat and tears of the israelites all right so-called blacks hispanics and native american indians you know so again the people that you see in the upper echelons all right are, the, are these heathens all right the small hats these other nations they're gonna have to build up our kingdoms and whatnot all right they're gonna have to build up our kingdom they ain't just gonna get the easy way out they ain't just gonna get dead all right because that would be way too easy all right they're gonna have to serve a hardcore bondage all right for a thousand years all right you know and these other nations they're gonna go to back to their perspective areas and all that you know there's perspective lands so on and so forth but as for esau edom all right pursuing the book of obadiah he's gonna cease to exist like there's no mercy coming to Esau whatsoever, all right? Esau Edom is the only nation that's not, that's, that, that, that doesn't receive any type of mercy, all right? So after that thousand years, you know, Esau Edom, he's going to be exterminated off the face of the earth, all right? And you can read the whole book of Obadiah. It says there shall be no, rem no remaining of the house of Esau, all right? You know, because they're literally going to be exterminated, all right? After those thousand years of building up our kingdom, all right? But that's neither here nor there. That's just a, that's a topic for another time. But let's continue. It says, uh, verse 11. It says, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The men, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, all right? Meaning the riches of these other nations, all right? So you're going to have the riches of these other nations being brought unto us, all right? You know, the nation of Israel. That's why it says our gates shall be open you know, uh, they shall not be shut day nor night because you're going to have steady have riches being brought to us, all right? You know, we're literally going to be royalty, all right? You know, kings upon the earth, you know, 
we look at these other nations and be like, dad, they got it made. You know, they living in these big palaces, the Birmingham palaces, all right? You know, these palaces that they got over in England, you know, big, uh, 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 rooms and stuff made out of gold and all that. That's nothing compared to what we're gonna have, all right? The scriptures talk about how our uh, cities are gonna be made up with uh, built with precious stones and all that, all right? You know, but let's continue. Verse 12, it says, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish, yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted, all right? So, hey, these other nations, they ain't gonna have a choice. No, I don't want to do it. No, I ain't building up your palace. No, they, they ain't gonna have the option. It's like, it's either you get down or lay down. You know what I mean? That's how it's coming. Because guess what? Back in our captivity, did we have the option to say, no, I'm sorry, you know, I'm gonna take a break for the day and I'll get back to it later. You know what I'm saying? Or did we have the options to say, no, I ain't doing it. I ain't getting out there in that field and picking cotton. All right? If we wasn't let those words come out of our mouth, all right, we'll get hanged, we'll get whipped, all right, and various other things that these devils have done, all right? You know, we didn't have the option to do that. You know, so guess what? It's going to be the same way for these damn devils, all right, point blank, period, all right? You know, if they don't want to get, if they don't want to serve us, all right, they're going to have to utterly perish, like the scripture just said. Now, verse 13 is the whole point of me bringing this out, because I, like I stated, you know, the whole earth is going to be refreshed. Everything's gonna be new. It's gonna be an earth that you can't even fathom. Like everything's gonna be beautified. All right? And this is a scripture proving that. It says, The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my fleet, so like the place of my feet glorious. All right? The Lord said he's gonna make the place of his feet glorious. And what is the place of the Lord's feet? All right, this is a precept for it. All right, this is uh, Isaiah 66 and verse one. It says, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? All right, so as you see, the earth is the Lord's footstool, all right? And what the Lord say he's going to do in Isaiah 60, he's going to beautify the place of his feet, all right? So that just lets you know that everything is going to be beautified. Everything is going to be set back in order, all right? You know, the water is going to be look, it's going to be crystal clear, all right? Beautiful, all right? Fresh air, you ain't going to see no more damn chemtrails in the air and all that, you know, so on and so forth, all right? You know, animals is going to be able to roam and be animals. All right, you ain't gonna have this damn devil trying to crossbreed animals. All right, like mixing a damn li uh, lion with a tiger and creating a liger. All right, you know, or mixing a sheep with a goat. All right, you know, is this this is what this devil has done. All right, you know, this is what this damn devil you saw Edom has done. All right, he has did a number on the earth, and the Lord he's getting ready to change back, change things back to his natural state. All right, so with that being said. I want to bring out Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14, all right? Because our captivity is almost over, all right? Things have been to change drastically. So this is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. And it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said the Lord living, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, all right? You know, the first exodus, you know, we was brought up out of the land of Egypt and all that, all right? You know, we walked through the Red Sea. You know, Moses split the Red Sea, you know, all that. You know, plagues came upon Egypt, you know. You know, uh, Pharaoh was told to, and Moses told Pharaoh to let us go and all that. All right. It's, it's no more going to be talked about that. Why? Because the second exodus that's coming is going to surpass that one. All right. Verse 15, it says, But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. All right. The land of the north is talking about America. All right. You know. It says, and from all the lands whither he had driven them. Because going back to the curses, right? Didn't it say that we would be scattered into all nations? Okay? So that's what's going to happen. The Lord, he's going to deliver the elect out of America, Babylon the Great, and also the elect that's dwelling in these other uh, uh, countries. All right? Because we're all over the place. All right? It's a lot. It's a lot. Give me a second. You know? But yeah, that's what's getting ready to happen. Right. 
Selakia. Verse, um, so like, do I want to get verse 16? <clears throat> Yeah, let's just get verse 16 for edification purposes, all right? And it says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, all right? Because that's what we're doing right now, all right? The Lord has set men upon the earth, you know, to ultimately, you know, fish for the elect. That's why we come out here in the streets, week in, week out, you know, and prophesy, you know, and tell our people to repent. We're fishing for the elect, all right? That's why we make different uh, YouTube videos throughout the week, because we're fishing for the elect. But now watch this. Give me a second. And it says, and it says, and they shall fish them, and after I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. All right, you know. So right now you got you got men upon the earth being fishers, but eventually those fishers are gonna be turned into hunters. All right, you know. Eventually, you know. Uh, you know, it's going to, uh, a hunting is going to start, right? You know, because you got these elites, all right, these celebrities and all that. You know, they're, they're, they're they have underground bunkers right now because they see that you know war is on the horizon, right? You know, uh, specifically talking about these elites, they know that you know uh, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, is on the way, all right? They know that, so they they're trying to hide their face from the uh, the Savior, like the scripture saying. Uh, the book of Revelation, all right? Let me see if I can find that. So like you. All right, yeah, this is Revelation chapter 6 and verse, um, let's start at verse 15, all right? No, let's start at verse 14, all right? And this is going into World War III, all right? Because this is why these uh, these uh, celebrities, these rich people upon the earth, all right, these elites, this is why they have underground bunkers and whatnot. So this is Revelation chapter 6 and verse 14. And it says, And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place, all right? This is talking about when the thermonuclear missiles dropped, all right? You know, the heavens is going to part like a scroll. All right, that's talking about that big mushroom cloud, all right? You know? And everything, you know, the mountains and the islands, they're going to move out of their place, all right? You know, that's how hard these missiles are going to uh, hit. You know, earthquakes are going to take place, tsunami, tsunamis and all that. You know, it's going to get very bad. That's why the scriptures say the, the, the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. It's literally going to shake, all right? Verse... Um, 16 no verse 15 is the point and it says and the kings of the earth and great men and rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains all right so that's that's, that's going into what you see today you know you see these uh different elites and whatnot you know you, have, you see these different elites they got their underground bunkers you know uh you know mark zuckerberg you know, Elon Musk, even uh, uh, Rick Ross, all right? You know, Rick Ross, he, uh, like, I think it was like the beginning of this year, he's talking about how he just purchased the uh, underground bunker and all that. You know, he said he's gonna go above and beyond what Elon Musk did, you know? He's pretty much bragging on like what his uh, underground, bunk underground bunker has. He's talking about how, you know, oh, I got a machine that can make water out of H2O. He don't even realize how he sound because water is H2O. They just show you how dumb a lot of these people are all right but nevertheless you know the point being is that you know this is what this scripture is going into people buying underground bunkers and all that you know that's that's prophesied about in the scriptures all right people going underground and all that that's prophesied in the scriptures all right because these people they know what's getting ready to take place they know that world war three is getting ready to pop off and these elites they know that the savior all right yahweh shah who the world ignorantly calls jesus is coming back all right and this is what the scripture got to say about that. 
it says, and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, all right? These at least, they know what's coming. They know Yahusha is coming back, all right? That's why they buying these underground bunkers because they're trying to hide their face from the lamb. They're trying to hide from the face of the lamb, all right? The lamb being Yahusha. And it says, verse 17, it says, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand, all right? You know, ain't nobody going to be able to stand if you're not the elect. If you're not the elect, you're through. It don't matter if you go hide underground, you know, buy a bunker and all this other stuff. Because guess what? Those hunters is going to hunt you out of those rocks, all right? Like we read about in uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, uh, 16, all right? You know? So, yeah, you know, I just wanted to bring that out for edification purposes since I was already on it, all right? But the whole point of me bringing out Jeremiah chapter 16 is to show you that, you know, a, a shift is getting ready to come upon the earth, all right? The, the Israelites is about to be taken out of captivity, all right? It's about to be a second exodus, all right? You know, a power shift is coming upon the earth. All right, so let's go to Isaiah chapter 14 in verse 1, all right? And this is going to show you what's going to happen after the elect is ultimately taken out of this captivity that we're in, all right? So Lucky, the, 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 this, is going to, this shows what's going to happen after the Israelites started with the elect. It's going, this shows what's going to happen after they're taken out of captivity. This is Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1, and it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the stranger shall be joined unto them and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. All right. So the scripture says that the Lord, he's going to have mercy on Jacob. All right. You know, he's going to yet choose Israel. Did that say all people? No. It said he's going to have mercy on Jacob. J Jacob being the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. And he's going to choose Israel. Israel being those who you see on this chart right here right the elect of these people that you see on this chart all right and also the israelites that scatter in the other nations that look like the other nations all right you know because you have israelites that look like so-called white people you have israelites that look like so-called chinese people that look like uh africans all right you know that look like uh japanese hawaiians and all that because we're scattered all over the place all right so lucky verse uh, 2 and it says and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors all right going back to Revelation chapter 13 and 10 he that leads to captivity shall go into captivity he that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword this is the patience and the faith of the saints all right you know so this is pretty much talking about that all right saying the same thing so our oppressors those that we had to serve and all that they're going into chains all right these are uh, upper echelons or the elites and all that or these other nations small hats 1948ers your rothschilds your rockefellers you know all them type of people guess what they're going into chains all right they got to serve hardcore bondage all right you know that's why i say uh the scriptures talk about how you know uh it might be in the same chapter, matter of fact. So lucky. Let me... Yeah, if I if I get the chance, I'm gonna bring that out later. I'm gonna bring out the scripture that talk about how you know uh, kings shall be our nursing fathers and you know queens are nursing mothers and all that. Roughly paraphrasing. All right. Yeah. You know, a major power shift is getting ready to come. All right. This is uh, verse 3, and it says, For thus saith the Lord, no, so lock you. Yeah, verse 3, and it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from the fear, and from thy fear, from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. All right? So a power shift is coming. All right? This hardcore bondage that we had to serve throughout centuries. All right? You know? actually you know like yeah centuries thousands of years because you know we've been in captivity under pretty much almost every nation all right you know every nation has a hand has had a hand in our captivity so the lord he's going to give us rest from that all right the scriptures talk about how isn't israel a horn uh is a uh, a home born slave all right showing you that we've always been in captivity all right 
captivity after captivity after captivity. All right, because we kept being disobedient to the Lord. So this is the last captivity right here. And if you can't get it, if you can't repent and get it right, the Lord, he's not going to put us in captivity again. All right, you're just going to have to be destroyed. All right. There is not going to be another captivity after this captivity right here under Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. All right. Let me see if I uh, get that scripture. We'll talk about how isn't uh, Israel a homeborn slave. Yeah, this is Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, Israel, it says, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? All right? This is Israel's a homeborn slave because we've always been in captivity after captivity. All right? And it says, why is he spoiled? We're spoiled because of our disobedience. All right? The Lord, he has given us commandments to keep, but we want to go against the grain. All right? You know, we want to serve other so called gods and all that, false idols, you know? committed different type, different types of abominations and all that even unto this day all right this is why you see our people in this lowest state bug the hell out all right you know because we continue to go against yahweh all right we continue to eat the things that the lord said don't eat we continue to celebrate these pagan holidays that's pretty much uh venerating so-called gods all right false gods and whatnot you know ishtar you know uh uh uh, uh, uh nimrod all right you know, so on and so forth. Samaramis, you know, Tammuz and all that. All right. You know, this is why, because we keep doing these things. All right. We just we just can't get it. All right. You know, and if you can't get it by the time the Lord, Yahweh Shai come back. All right. If you can't get it by the time Jacob trouble pop off, then that's just it. There is no more captivity. All right. The Lord is coming to deliver the elect and to destroy those of our people that did not want to repent. All right, that's why the scripture is saying, Amos chapter 9, I believe, the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. All right? So, yeah. You know, let's go back to, uh, I want to get Baruch chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 21. All right? Because the Lord, it's, it's going to be a power shift. This is why I'm bringing this out. It's going to be a power shift from the nation of Israel, the true Israelites, all right? So called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, being at the bottom of society. All right, we're, we're about to be placed back up on high, all right? You know, going back to 2 Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 9. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of that following, all right? This is Baruch chapter 4 and verse 21. It says, Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies, all right? That's what we're supposed to be doing right now, all right? You know, crying out to you, how about you, was shy? You know, praying that the Lord will... Uh, turn back our captivity very soon praying that the Lord will bring destruction upon America Babylon the great all right because as I stated earlier that's the only way for things to change for the better if America is destroyed all right who's ruling America all right these damn devils Esau eating the so-called white man all right you know but let's continue verse 22 it says for my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you and joy is come unto me from the holy one because the mercy which shall come upon so like because it says because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting savior right mercy is going to soon come upon the nation of israel starting with the elect all right you know the lord he's gonna you know he, he's uh, he's turned his back on us for a small point in time because we ultimately turned our back on the lord all right you know but that's going to change all right i think it's a scripture where it talks about how for a small moment have i forsaken thee but with everlasting, mer or everlasting mercies shall I gather thee. Roughly paraphrasing, all right? But let's let's continue. It says, uh, verse 23. It says, For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh by Shem Shai will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. All right? We were sent out with mourning and, and weeping. All right? We had, to go out the, we had to go through captivity after captivity after captivity after captivity. Serving our enemies, all right? Hardcore bondage. And the hardest uh, bondage that we had to go through is this current bondage that we're in right now, all right? Under the rulership of Esau Edom, the so-called white man, all right? Let's continue. Verse 24, it says, Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see surely your salvation from our power which shall come, uh, come upon you 
with great glory and brightness for the everlasting. All right. You know, this is what's getting ready to happen. You know, or the neighbors of Zion talking about, you know, these other nations. All right. They've seen our captivity. You know, they rejoice over our captivity and our downfall. All right. But very soon, they're going to see the Lord place us back on high. All right. That's why the scriptures talk about how, you know, uh, you know, the heathen shall envy. All right. Let me see if I can get that. All right. This is uh second Nedra chapter two and verse 28. And it says the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Lord. All right. These heathens, they're going to see us being placed back on high and whatnot. All right. But guess what? There's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. All right. They're just going to have to sit and watch how it's really done. All right. Because right now we look at these devils, these other nations be like and think to ourselves like that. They really living it. All right. You know, they got these nice mansions, these nice palaces, nice cars. All right. You know, private jets and all that. But guess what? We're going to have chariots. All right. So-called UFOs. All right. They're what the world calls UFOs. All right. But they're really angelic vehicles of uh of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, right? Spiritual vehicles of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, all right? You know, that's how we're going to be traveling. You know, and even better than that, you know, the, the elect is going to have spiritual power. So we, if we don't even want to do that, we could just teleport if we want to, all right? You know, we could fly if we want to. The scriptures say that we're going to have the ability, to, uh, the ability to do that, all right? They talk about how we shall mount up as eagles, all right? You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing, so on and so forth. All right, we're gonna have to be. We're gonna be have the ability to run like lightning. All right, you know, run stupid fast. All right, this is what's coming. You know, but yeah, you know these heathens are gonna see our captivity. They've seen our captivity, but soon they're gonna see our salvation and our glory. All right, verse um, twenty-five. It says, "My chil children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you." From Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, for thy enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction, and shalt tread upon his neck. All right, you know. So yeah, you know, uh, we gotta suffer patiently. That's what we're doing right now. All right, we gotta be in a lower state, you know, until the Lord, you know, brings us up out of this lower state. All right, and guess what? After the Lord uh, brings us up from this lower state, like the scripture just said, you know, we're sure we're sure we're gonna see his destruction. All right. You know, we're going to see the destruction of this damn devil in his kingdom, all right? You know, and we're going to tread upon his neck, all right? This devil, he's going to get his just due, all right? He's not just going to get away scot-free with what he has done to the uh, nation of Israel, all right? And, what to, and to what he has done to the earth in general, all right? Because this devil, he has polluted the whole earth, all right? You know? But going to, going to the scripture, they talk about how, you know, uh, you know, uh, Salakia. It's a scripture that talk about how the elect is going to be able to see the destruction of a ba of Babylon the Great, all right, from the chariot. All right. Yeah, this is Revelation chapter 15 and verse 1. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 2. And it says, And I saw as it was a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, Stand on the sea of glass having harps of Yahweh. All right. So the elect is literally going to be standing, you know, looking down at the destruction of Babylon the Great. All right. So, yeah, going back to what we just read, you know, in Baruch chapters 4 and verse 25, you know, we're going to see the destruction of our enemy. All right. And we're going to tread upon his neck. All right. Lord willing, we'll be of the elect. Let's jump to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 25. And uh, verse 7, and it says, There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth will I utter with my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. All right, so this is a beautiful thing, all right, for uh, the elect to see the fall of, our en of their enemies, all right? You know, Lord willing, I'll be of the elect. Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters out there be of the elect, all right? You know, but if you see that, that's a, that's a that's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing, right? To see the fall of uh, our enemies and whatnot. These other nations, chiefly Esau, even the so-called uh, uh, white man, right? To see the fall of America, Babylon the Great. Because this has been long waited for, right? For many years, you know, waiting to see the downfall of America, right? You know, because America is pretty much deemed, you know, as the so-called greatest empire to ever exist, 
right? So with America being the so-called greatest empire to ever exist, it's gonna be the greatest fall to ever take place in the history you know, of America, Babylon, and Greece, all right? So yeah, that's a beautiful thing, and that's what we're getting ready to see. And we're seeing that right now, right? You know, everything that you see going on in the earth right now, these wars growing up, it's all the start of America, Babylon, the Great being ready, getting ready to be brought down, all right? So this is Joel chapter three and verse one. And it says, for behold in the days and at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Judah representing the uh, southern kingdom of Israel, all right? The so-called blacks, uh, 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 Jamaicans, all right? Haitians and all that. All right, that represents like the southern kingdom, all right? And then Jerusalem represents the rest of the tribes, all right? The Latin tribes, all right? You know, the uh, natives, Hispanics and all that, all right? Verse 2, it says, I also will gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Yahweh Shepai and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage Israel, for they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, all right? That's what's getting ready to happen, all right? That's why you're seeing all these uh, other nations getting involved in this war that's taking place, all right? That's why you see these uh, 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 these government officials passing bills for a draft and all that. You know, 18 to 26 year olds, men and women, to have to automatically be en enlisted in the selective service, all right? Because war is on the horizon, all right? Yahweh Bashem is putting the spirit of war in the earth, all right? The Yahweh Bashem is gathering all these nations into the valley of Yahweh Shabbat to be judged for what they have done to the nation of Israel, right? Verse uh, three, and it says, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a, wine, a girl for wine that they might drink. And that's what happened, all right? You know, we were sold, you, you know, in the, we were sold, so on and so forth for different things and all that. You know, that's what this is going into. All right, verse four, it says, yeah, what you have to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine, will you render me a comp re recompense? And if you render me a recompense, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own heads, all right? You know, uh, 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 Salaki, let me read that again. Uh, I, I lost my spot. Yeah, Tyree, Zidon, and the coast of Palestine, that's going into these uh, Arab, Arabs, all right? Ishmael, all right? You know, they're not innocent either because guess what, before, this captivity, we had to go through a captivity under uh, uh, Ishmael, right? You know, the sub-Saharan slave trade, all right? And that's real baffling why, baffling to me that a lot of you so-called blacks and a lot of you Hispanics as well, you wanna be damn Muslims and whatnot, right? You know, you think that's your religion, but whole time that's your oppressor's religion, right? You know, but let's continue. Point being of me bringing that out is because these Ishmaelites, they gonna have to get it too, all right? Verse um, 5, it says, Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and carried, carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. Verse 6, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold to the Grecians. All right, that's what happened. All right, Grecians being these uh, Edomites. All right, that's what happened. You know, we were sold to the Grecians and whatnot. All right, you know, they tried to tell you in school that, you know, uh, you know Africans sold Africans into slavery. Africans sold Africans to the white man. That's not what happened. Africans, Hamites, sold Israelites to the so-called white man, all right? This is what this is going into. Again, like I stated, the Bible is not just some book of fairy tales. You know, it's a history book, or right? A book of prophecy. And this is what happened, all right? You know, we were sold to the damn uh, Grecians, to these, uh, these Edomites, all right? You know, by Hamites and whatnot, all right? Let's continue. It says that you might be removed far, far from their border. It says, verse seven, behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head, all right? So hey, we're about to be brought out of this captivity and the Lord, he's gonna bring judgment upon these nations that had a hand in our captivity, all right? Verse eight, and it says, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah and, the, and, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to the people of far off, for the Lord has spoken it. All right? So again, he that leads to captivity shall go into captivity. All right? Verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, 
let them come up. All right, this is what you're saying right now. All right, everybody's getting prepared to go to war. All right, because the Lord, He's putting that spirit of war in the earth right now. All right, because we're fastly approaching World War Three, the war to end all wars. All right. Verse 10 it says, Beat your plowshares and the swords and pr your pruning hooks and the spears. Let the weak say, I'm strong. All right, that's why you're seeing these other nations that was pretty much considered to be weak nations rising up, trying to flex their muscle. All right, you know, this is why you're seeing that. All right, because the weak is saying they're strong. Verse 11 it says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, gather yourselves together round about thither, because thy mighty ones. Or cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Verse 12. Let the heathen be awakened and come to the valley of Yahweh For there I will, will I sit to judge all the heathen round about you. All right. Yahweh Shapai, it ultimately means the valley of the Lord's judgment. All right. And it says, uh, verse 13, it says, Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, ye da come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, over slot the fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Verse 14. Motsus and Motsus, Slock and Motsus, Motsus in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Alright, that's what your house should me. The valley of the Lord's decision. Alright? You know, that's what's getting ready to happen. These the other nations are getting ready to be brought down to the valley of the Lord's decision to be judged. Alright? For what they've done to the nation of Israel, right? You know, you're not seeing all these things taking place for no reason. These other nations, they don't even get, they don't even understand why they're getting drawn down into the valley of Yahweh Shapai. You know, but the Lord, He controls all things. He's putting the Spirit on them to do that. All right, because everything you see going on right now is ultimately of the Lord's will. All right. Let's get um, Salakia. Um, let's get Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12 Alright And it says And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem Their flesh shall consume away While they stand upon their feet And their eyes shall consume away And their holes And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth Alright That's what's getting ready to happen Alright Everybody that try to come up against the nation of Israel Alright These other nations this is what's going to happen, all right? World War Three, the nations, the armies of this earth, all right? These other nations, they're 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 going to get melted, all right? This is pretty much what the scripture is saying. Long story short, let's get um. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get Second Ezra chapter thirteen. All right, I get it kind of often, you know, but again, this is for those who are not aware, all right? During World War Three, your house shot is going to come back, all right? These nations of the earth. They're going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels and whatnot, but they're going to fail miserably, all right? This is why these no, these other nations is getting, you know, uh, drawn down into the Middle East, you know, the valley of the Lord's decision, all right? Because they're getting ready to be melted, all right? They're getting ready to be judged in World War Three, all right? So, uh, Salaki, let me get it right quick. So uh, this is uh, Second Edge chapter thirteen, and we're gonna start at verse. Um, yeah, we're gonna start at verse one. All right, and it says, and, and it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the ways thereof. Verse three. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. All right? This man that's waxing strong, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right? And the thousands of heaven is talking about the angels that's going to come with Yahweh Shai, right? He's coming with the armies of heaven. Verse 4. And it says, And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice, like as the earth felleth when it filleth fire. 
Verse 5, and after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number out from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. All right. You know, and it's not talking about like the sea, like you're like, you know, uh, like, you know, like a regular sea. It's talking about the, the heavens. All right. You know, it's talking about out of the sky because technically, you know, when you read the creation and all that, you know, the, it talks about the waters above the waters. All right. You know, the waters, you know, out of space and all that, that's pretty much considered like water. All right. So when it talk about he came out the sea, that's what they're talking about. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. He's going he's gonna, to, uh, you know, break the sky. All right. He's going to split the skies when he's come back. All right. Let's continue. Verse six, it says, but I beheld and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Verse seven, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven. And I could not. All right. This is going into the fathership. All right. Not the mothership, but the fathership. All right. So-called UFO that Yahweh is going to come back. All right. You know, and I like to give the example of the movie Independence Day. All right. You know, with Will Smith. All right. You saw like an alien invasion and a huge so-called UFO split the sky. All right. And it was so big that you could really you couldn't really see where the UFO began or, or ended. All right. This is what that's describing. All right. You know, the, this fathership that Yahweh Shah gonna come back going is gonna be so big, you can't even see where it begins or where it ends. All right? Verse uh, 8, and it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they that which were gathered to subdue him were so afraid, yet there is fight. All right? So again, during World War III, these other nations, they're gonna be fighting against each other, but they're gonna see that they got, but they're gonna realize they got a bigger problem when they see Yahweh Shah split the sky, all right? And they're gonna be afraid. But yet the Lord's gonna have the spirit on them to, get, uh, to still fight anyway. All right. Verse uh, nine, and it says, "And lo, as he saw the violence of the muscles that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war." Verse ten, but only I saw that sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. All right. You know, so Yahweh Shai is going to destroy the armies of the earth. They're going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai and they're going to fail miserably. All right. Um, verse 11, it says, And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So when Edra seen his vision, you know, he was afraid. All right. It looked very, you know, uh, scary. All right. You know, but this is a vision of what's getting ready to soon happen. All right. You know, in World War Three. And that's why we tell you, Jakes, you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians don't voluntarily join this devil's army. Because if you do, you're going to go over to the uh, Middle East, all right, to the Valley of Yahweh Shippai, and you're going to be destroyed right along with this multitude of these other nations that's going to be destroyed when Yahweh Shah come back, all right? If you go if you go over there, you're not coming back, all right? If you get drafted into World War III, you're not coming back, all right? That's uh, that's uh, pretty much suicide, all right? So, yeah, that's what's getting ready to happen, man. This is the judgment that the Lord, he's going to uh, bring upon the earth. So, it's a lock yet. I want to get Isaiah chapter um, 34 right quick. So this is uh, Isaiah chapter 34, and we're going to start at verse, um, it's a lot here. Yeah, this is Isaiah chapter 34, so we're going to start at verse 1, and it says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people, let the earth hear all that is therein, the world, and all things that are come forth of it. Verse 2, and it says, For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, 
he had delivered them to the slaughter, all right? And that's what we're seeing getting ready to take place. That's why you're seeing all this war talk come, uh, uh, happening right now. That's why you hear all this talk about drafts and all that. Because the Lord, he's going to bring his fury upon all the armies of the earth, all right? Verse um, 3, it says, Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come upon, shall come about the carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Verse 4, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall ro be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, and the leaf falleth, fa off, falleth off from the vine as a filling as a falling fig from the fig tree, all right? So yeah, this is what's gonna happen. You know, like we read about earlier, the heavens are gonna depart like a scroll, all right? Saying the same thing. You know, it's gonna be a big mushroom cloud that's gonna come when uh, the nukes drop, all right? So on and so forth, all right? And people are gonna be destroyed, all right? Verse, uh, so lucky. Verse five, and it says, my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come upon Idumia and the people of my curse to judgment. Idumia is talking about the Edomites, so-called white people, right? So the main people that the Lord is looking to judge, you know, is really Esau Edom. All right, the Lord got a bone to pick with these devils. All right, you know. Let's continue. It says, uh, verse six: the sword of the Lord is filled with blood; it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. And for the Lord had they sacrificed in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea, all right? So again, the Lord, he has a bone to pick with Idumea, all right? Esau and Edom, you know? That's why Babylon the Great is the main place that's going to be destroyed because who's ruling over this place, all right? Esau, Edom, all right? You know? This devil, he has to be taken out of power in order for righteousness to, uh, you know, come upon the earth, all right? Let's get uh, so lucky. Yes, verse. Let's get a uh, verse twenty-nine. It says, "Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to be be so lucky, will, be will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth." These are the days that we're in right now. The Lord, He's getting ready to deliver the elect, all right, out of the four winds of the earth. Verse thirty, and He shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Verse 31, and one shall undertake to fight against one another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another, all right? And why does it say one realm against another? Because, like we stated, the the, uh, the uh, Yahweh Shai and uh, the angels, all right, the armies of heaven is going to be going against, you know, uh, the armies of the earth, all right? You know? So, yeah, this is what's going to happen. And Yahweh Shai, he's going to come to the astonishment. All right, when you least expect it, all right, World War III is going to be popping off. And, you know, these people are not going to be, you know, expecting, you know, Yahweh Shai, you know, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus to come back during that time. All right. You know, but he is, you know, this is, see, the elect, we know this. Lord willing, we be of the elect, you know, but those that's paying attention and occupied in prophecy, we know that this is going to happen. All right. You know, but the rest of the world, they're going to be caught off guard because they're not paying attention. They don't know the scriptures. All right. You know, the Lord, he's given us the blueprint to what's going to happen. All right. We, we've been given the script. The Lord has told us what's going to happen. All right. We're just watching the movie play out right now. So. Let's get um, Luke chapter 21 and verse nine. And it says, but when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. All right. So, yeah, we hearing about all these different wars brewing up and all that but guess what you know the end is not by and by because we still have some more prophecies that have to, have to come to pass you know we still got to go through jacob's trouble you know we still got to go through the mark of the beast all right you know but once we know that the mark of the beast is on the scene and it's made mandatory then we know that it's like it's literally any day now all right we know that the end is literally any day now after that point you know but we're not quite at that point now because you know you can't skip over prophecies, all right? Every prophecy that the Lord said is going to happen, it has to happen, all right? Let's continue. Verse 10, it says, Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be seen 
so I can shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right. You know, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to be taking place, you know, in the, in the last days before Yahweh Shah's return. All right. We have been given signs to look out for. So, uh, so lucky. So with that, I want to get a uh, second Ezra chapter nine. All right. To pretty much go with what I just said. This is second Ezra chapter nine and verse one. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou hast seen, so I can without see as part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. Verse two, then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Verse three, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Verse four, then shalt thou well understand that the Lord, so I can, that the most high speak of those things from the days which that were before thee, even from the beginning. All right. Because the scripture says the Lord, he has declared the end from the beginning. All right. So we've been given signs to look out for. And all these signs that the, that the Lord said look out for before his return is happening right now. All right. So guess what? That means that, hey, Babylon the Great is on his last leg. All right. And a power shift is soon to come. All right. That's really the whole point, you know, of uh, this highway and byway lesson. All right. To show you that, you know, a power shift is coming. All right. This is a scripture that I want to uh, get right quick. And I, be I believe I might have brought it out. Maybe last uh, highway and byway lesson. I'm not sure, but um, it's a lucky. Yeah, this is Second Ezra chapter seven and verse forty-three. It says, uh, "Matter of fact, let's start at verse. Let's start at verse um. Yeah, let's start at verse forty-two." All right. It says, matter of fact, let's start at verse 41. It says, even so now, seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it be not so, uh, be, wherefore, wherefore shall it not be so now also? All right. Because in the last days, we're obviously seeing, you know, uh, corruption growing, wickedness increasing, so on and so forth. All right. And that lets us know that, that we're indeed at the end. Verse uh, 42, he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory do of, doth abide. Therefore have we prayed for the weak, all right? So this present life we're living right now, you know, it's not the end all be all, all right? And that's the mentality that a lot of our people have. You know, our people think that, you know, let's live it up now and chase a bag right now because, you know, hey, this is the end all be all. America, Babylon the Great, you know, it's the land of milk and honey, all right? Our people, uh, uh, they don't have that vision. And the scriptures talk about how where there is no vision, you know, the people perish, all right? You know, I'm not going to get it, you know, but the scriptures does talk about that, you know? So because of our people not having vision, a lot of our people are going to perish because they can't see any further than uh, Babylon the Great, America, you know, making it in this place, all right? So this is uh, verse 43. This is the point. And it says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come where corruption is past, all right? You know, so a power shift is getting ready to come. All right, the day of doom is going to be the uh, uh, be the end of this current time, all right? You know, the day of doom has to happen in order for us to experience a new earth, you know, a new power shift, all right? A new way of living, immortality. This has to happen. America has to be destroyed. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If America is not destroyed, things is going to continue to go on how it's going on right now, right? And eventually, the whole earth will eventually be destroyed, all right? You know, this devil, he cannot rule longer than he's supposed to rule, all right? So, yeah, you know, uh, verse 44 says, Intemperance is at hand, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up, all right? You know, we're about to come into a time where, you know, hey, it's nothing. It's going to be nothing but righteousness on the earth. All right. You know, because of why? Like we read earlier, when the wicked birth rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, everybody rejoices, roughly paraphrasing. All right. So, yeah, when the righteous in authority, you know, uh, you know, everything's going to be 
moving smoothly, all right? You know? So, yeah. This is the time that we're coming into, all right? That was really the whole point of this whole highway and byway lesson, all right? So, uh, I got a few more scriptures I want to bring out before I close out, I believe. So, lock you. Give me a second. Like I said, it's pretty hot out here today. All right. You know, but we still come out here anyway. You know, it's good to talk about, you know, uh, be in season, out of season. So ain't no excuses. So I want to get um First Thessalonians chapter five, and um we're gonna start at verse one. All right, it says, "But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, have you no need that I write unto you?" Verse two: For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right, the day when Yahweh shot come back and you know split the skies and all that, you know it's gonna come like a thief in the night. It's going to come as a thief in the night to those who are not paying attention, all right? Or to those that are not reading the scriptures. Because we know exactly, like, when Yahweh Shah is going to come back, all right? Not like the specific date or the day, but we know that he's going to come back during World War III, all right? But see, the rest of the world, they don't know that. You know, they, they just think that World War III is going to pop off. But they don't know it's deeper than that. They don't know that Yahweh Shah is going to come back, you know, during that time, you know? Verse 3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall slack you. Then sudden destruction cometh upon uh, cometh the slack you. Cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So, hey, that's how the day of the Lord is going to come. As a thief in the night, he's going to come upon them like a, uh, like, tra you know, like a woman travail, you know, that's getting ready to give birth and all that, and they're not going to escape. All right? Verse 4, and it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief, all right? So those of you brothers out there that's paying attention to prophecy, you know, staying occupied in prophecy, you know, paying attention to what's going on in the world, you know, you're not going to be uh, caught off guard or ta uh, taken, you know, like, uh, you know, it's not, the day is not going to take you like a thief in the night, all right? Verse 5, it says, You are the children, uh, you are the children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Verse 6, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right. Right now is the time for us to be watching and being sober. All right. Waking up out of sleep. All right. The scriptures say it's hot time to wake out of sleep. This is uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And it says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. All right, our salvation is nearer than what we ever believed. All right, and keep in mind, this was back during the time, you know, when you, uh, uh, you know, the Romans, you know, they, they, they was pretty much in rulership. All right, you know, when Yahweh Shah was on the scene. So pretty much, we've been in the end of the world since Yahweh Shah was on the scene. All right, and that's when the Romans was in the rulership. And who are the Romans? Esau, Edom. So again, that proves the scriptures to be true. All right, Second Andrew chapter six. Esau is the end of the world, but Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. All right, we've been in the end of the world since uh, Esau, Edom has been in the rulership pretty much. All right, you know. So yeah, we was in the end. Of, we was at the end of the world even back when Yahweh Shai was on the scene. So that was like over two thousand years ago, right? So how much more now? We are at the end of the end. All right. Let's uh, verse uh, twelve. It says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, all right? It's time for you to repent. Stop being, living in darkness, all right? Doing the things that the Lord said don't do. Being an adulterer or an adulteress, all right? You know, being a nigga, all right? You know, being a damn bad bitch, all right? That's not something that the Lord is looking for. Niggas and bad bitches ain't going to get on the chariot, all right? Unless you repent. Because we all come from that 
type of lifestyle, all right? We all came from uh, wickedness, living lifestyles that, you know, are not right, you know? But you got to repent if you want to be delivered, all right? Because being that type of person is not going to get you on the cherry, all right? You got to change. You got to put off that old man, like the scriptures say. It says, uh, it says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Verse 14, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, all right? You know, because, of lust, because if you're trying to fulfill the flesh, you know, that's ultimately just going to, you know, uh, you know, put you, it's just ultimately going to, you know, uh, lead you to sin and whatnot, all right? Because this flesh that we're in, it's a it's sinful flesh, all right? So your focus should not be, you know, uh, trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh, all right? We're supposed to be walking in the spirit, you know? But yeah, I just want to bring that out because, you know, this is what, you know, this is the time that we're living in, all right? It's time to repent and turn back to y'all about seeing y'all all right? So uh, I want to get one last scripture, all right? And I believe I mentioned it earlier. Matter of fact, I want to get Ecclesiastes chapter 5, all right? You know, we bring it out pretty much all the time. You know, but I just, the Spirit is kind of on me to end with this. Because, um, you know, a lot of people, they think that they had the time to repent. And they don't, all right? And I'm going to make a lesson specifically about this later on, all right? You know, you got uh, this rapper, uh, Julio Fulio, all right? You know, that was pretty much just taken off the earth and whatnot. You know, pretty much. He knew that we was Israelites and whatnot, all right? It's a video out there floating around of him saying, yeah, we the Hebrew Israelites, you know, so on and so forth. I believe he was on Adam 22 uh, uh, podcast and whatnot. And he was saying that. So he knew that he, he was an Israelite. But guess what? He continued to live a nigga lifestyle, all right? You know, making fun of his oppositions that was killed and whatnot. You know, make, making diss tracks to him. You know, bragging about different bodies he caught. So on and so forth. So yeah, he knew that he was an Israelite. But guess what? Him knowing that he was an Israelite, that didn't stop nothing, all right? That didn't save him from anything. So that's a message to the rest of you Israelites out there, all right? You may know that you're an Israelite. You know, you may, that, you, knew, you may know that you're a tribe. Judah, all right? You know, Levi, all that. You, that's all cool and whatnot. But guess what? Simply knowing that is not going to save you, all right? So that's why... It's important to repent because this dude, Julio Fulio, he didn't take this truth serious, all right? He knew he was an Israelite, but he wanted to continue to be a nigga, all right? And guess what? The Lord, he, he X'd him out, all right? By the same way, he was bragging about taking out his ops, all right? You know, the scriptures say if you live by the sword, you die by the sword, all right? And that's exactly what happened. He was living by the gun. He died by the gun, all right? You know, and I'm going to make a lesson dealing with this whole topic later, lesson, later on. You know, today, Lord willing. But, um, yeah, this is Second Edris or Ecclesiastes chapter, um, five. And we're going to start at verse one. All right, read on down to verse seven. And it says, Set thy heart upon thy goods and say not, and say not, have, not uh, have enough of my life. Verse two, follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. Right? Don't be self-willed out here doing what you want to do. Your focus should be on doing what Yahweh Hashem Yahushua said do first and foremost. All right, because that's what's going to get you delivered. All right, being self-willed is going to get a lot of your Israelites killed out here. Right. Verse three, it says, "Say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will sure, truly revenge thy pride." All right, and see, I was just made aware that this dude Julio Fulio, he had a song literally says. Uh, that, that's titled God Don't Know Alright I guess he was trying to mock and say that God don't know what he's doing Or don't see what he's doing I don't know but that's the title of one of his songs And whatnot. not right You know so that, that just shows you having that mentality That hey the Lord he ain't gonna do nothing You know he ain't gonna judge me for this That just shows you that that's a bad mindset To have because you know You might be getting away with things for a certain amount of time You know but eventually You know the Lord he's gonna revenge your pride Alright He's going to humble you. And that's exactly what happened to this dude, Julio Fulio. All right. If that's 
you know, uh, I think that's his name. I don't know. I know his name is Fulio. But, uh, yeah, verse uh, 4, it says, Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering, and he will know in, in no wise let thee go. All right? So the Lord, he's very long-suffering to, uh, you know, uh, Esau. You know, not Salaki. No, Salaki, my bad. You know, I had a brain for it. I was thinking of more, more than one thing at one time. He was very long-suffering to uh, Fulio, all right? But, you know, uh, that time came where the Lord said, you know, enough is enough. And he took him out, all right? Verse 5, and it says, Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin, all right? Don't create a long track record for yourself. Don't add sin unto sin, all right? Repent as soon as you get the opportunity to, all right? Because everybody ain't going to have to reap what they sow unless they repent, you know? Verse 6, it says, uh, Say not his mercy is great, and he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners. All right? So that's the importance to repent in these last days, because like I stated earlier, Amos chapter 9 and verse 10, the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. All right? Matter of fact, let me see if I could get that right quick, and I'm going to bounce back. This is Amos chapter 9 and verse 10. And it says, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not prevent us or overtake us, all right? That's not the mentality they have, you know? And like we just read, you know, uh, the Lord's indignation, it rests upon sinners, all right? So that's who the Lord, he's coming to destroy in these last days, all right? You know, the sinners of, the, uh, of, uh, of you Israelites, two-thirds of our people. You know, Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. Two-thirds of Israel is going to perish in this land. All right, and that one-third is going to be delivered. All right? So let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And we're going to end off, you know, with um, verse 7. All right? And it says, Make no tearing to, the, to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. Going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, all right, you know, where it's talking about how when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. All right, that's how it's going to be. All right, that's how it is when people get destroyed and whatnot and taken off the earth. They just live, they just be living their day to day life. All right, that's what happened with Fulio. He was celebrating his 26th birthday, and guess what? Somebody uh, pulled up on him, you know, and just took him out. All right. The Lord had a spirit of vengeance hop on somebody to take him out. All right. You know, so that's not the mentality that you should have. All right. Make no tearing and turn to the Lord. That's how you should be thinking. It says, and perish in the day of vengeance. All right. You know, and that day could come upon you at the time that you least expect it. And hey, we're coming into that time. Well, a major judgment is about to get ready to be handed out upon the earth. All right. You know, if you ain't on the Lord's good side in that day, you know, hey, you're going to be destroyed. All right. It was one more scripture that I was thinking about bringing out. You know, uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can find it right now. So I might just uh, go ahead and end off on that. You know, and um, yeah, you know, I'm trying to, I'm gonna have to cut it a little bit short. I can feel this phone getting ready to overheat. And I don't want it to, uh, you know, cut off and whatnot, you know. So we're going to end off with that. You know, uh, this lesson was a little bit shorter, probably about 15 minutes shorter than the uh, regular lessons and whatnot. But at the end of the day, Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters out there was edified. You know, as always, want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.